Hi everyone. Welcome back to session 6 of this chapter 4 called Reproductive Health. Before I move on to this session 6, what did we learn in session 5 of this chapter called Reproductive Health? We studied about the sexually transmitted diseases, right? Like many other diseases like gonorrhea, syphilis, AIDS, hepatitis B, etc., genital warts, etc., etc. Then we moved on to a very important concept called infertility. What are the reasons for the cause of infertility in both males and females? But is there no solution for the infertility? Yes, of course, there is a solution for the infertile couples to bear a child. As you know, infertility is nothing but what? Inability to bear a child. But as I said, there is a solution for this very important problem called infertility both in males and females. So what is the, uh, what is the solution for the infertile couples to bear child? The answer is the ARTs that is assisted reproductive technologies. So what do you mean by ART? Assisted reproductive technologies. So what are these? These are the techniques that assist conception to overcome infertility. So what are these? These are the techniques to assist conception to overcome infertility. So when these techniques are utilized, definitely the infertile couples will also be able to bear a child, right? So this is a very, very important techniques and also very important concept from examination point of view. Now let us study what are the different ARTs. So as I said, what are assisted reproductive technologies? These are the technologies that are used to overcome what infertility. So they assist what? They assist conception to overcome infertility. What are the different types of ARTs? The different types of ARTs are IVF, ET. Second one is GIFT. Third one is GIFT. And fourth one is IUT, then ICSI, then AI, then IUI. So what are the different ARTs? First one, what is IVF ET? In vitro fertilization and embryo transfer. Very commonly you might have heard about a word called test tube baby. Test tube baby, right? So IVF ET is nothing but the technique what we commonly call it as test tube baby. Then GIFT that is called zygote intra fallopian transfer. Then GIFT is called expand GIFT that is gamete intra fallopian transfer iot intra uterine transfer intra uterine transfer icsi intra cytoplasmic sperm injection then ai artificial insemination then iui is called intra uterine insemination so what are arts arts are the techniques that assist conception to overcome infertility and the different types of ARTs are IVF, ET, GIFT, GIFT, IUT, ICSI, AI and IUI. The abbreviations what is given in this different ARTs is very very important from examination point of view where any one of them may come for one mark question expand IVF, ET or expand GIFT, expand GIFT or expand IUT or expand ICSI or expand AI or IUI. Now let us study one by one. Hope you have understood what are assisted reproductive technologies. These are the techniques which come to the rescue of the infertile couples to bear the child. Now let us study one by one. So one you can see here in this beautiful picture that is IVF ET fertilization and embryo transfer. Now let us study one by one. Now moving on to this slide. So here you can see the different types of ARTs, right? You might have heard about gestational carrier that is surrogacy mother. So when the females are not able to carry or bear the child, then they can go for what we call it as surrogate mother. So the women carrying the pregnancy is not biologically related to the child. Then it zygote intra fallopian transfer that is as I said. The fertilized eggs that is the zygotes are placed in the fallopian tube within 24 hours after fertilization. So this is also a very important technique which 
definitely is going to help the infertile couples. Then as I said gift that is gamete intrafallopian transfer where both the gametes both the sperm and eggs are mixed together and, and are inserted into the fallopian tube. So where fertilization will take place as you know in the ampullary isthmic uh, junction is the junction where the fertilization takes place and where both the gametes that is the sperm and the egg are introduced into the fallopian tube. So this is also a very the success rate of this technique is very very high when compared to IVF and ET. Then moving on to the next uh, technique called ovulation induction. This is also a very important technique that is or it is one of the step in IVF ET where uh, ovulation is induced by using the hormones. By using the hormones by inducing the hormones into the ovaries more eggs are produced. So that is what we call it as ovulation induction. So hormonal therapy stimulate egg development and release of ova as you know the release of ova is called as what ovulation. Right, next is intrauterine insemination. Insertion of what is intra IUI that is insertion of male semen into the uterus to facilitate what fertilization. Sometimes the female cervical uh, mucus may be hostile to the partner's uh, sperms. So in that case the sperms will not enter into the vagina of the female. So in that case this is the technique which is going to help them out that is uh, intrauterine insemination. Then next comes the donor conception. Fertilization uh, through donor egg or donor sperm or donor embryo. So this is also one technique which is applied to help the or to overcome infertility. Then next comes in vitro fertilization as I said it is commonly called as what test tube baby. So the process of fertilization by extracting eggs, retrieving a sperm sample and then manually combining an egg and sperm in a laboratory, in a laboratory dish. So it is done in a glass, hence it is called in vitro, commonly called test tube because it is done in a glass uh, plate or a glass dish, hence the name uh, test tube, right. So the process of fertilization takes place in a glass, hence the name uh, test tube or it is also called as in vitro fertilization, right. Now intracytoplasmic sperm injection. What is intra-ICSI? Particularly this is a technique which is going to help or come to the rescue of the men who have low sperm count or abnormal sperms. So here the sperms are taken and injected into the mature egg and the process of fertilization is allowed. Anyhow I am going to explain one by one in each of the slides. So these are the ARTs that are going to assist conception to overcome infertility. <coughs> So what are the ARTs you have come across here this is one method called gestational or surrogacy then zygote intrafallopian transfer gamete intrafallopian transfer then we have intracytoplasmic uh, sperm injection then in vitro fertilization that is IVF then donor conception intrauterine insemination and ovulation induction. So all these are the very important ARTs that are definitely going to to come to the help of the issueless couple or the couple who wants to bear a child or who wants to have a child. So these are the important uh, assisted reproductive technologies. Now let us study one by one, right. So the first one is called IVF ET, expand IVF ET it is called as I said it is called test tube baby or in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer. IVF stands for what? In vitro fertilization. ET stands for what? Embryo transfer. Actually it is commonly test tube baby because the fertilization takes place in a glass or it is called in vitro. And this technique was first reported in 1978 by two very important British uh, physiologists by name Patrick Stepto and Robert Edwards, Edward. So these two were the scientists. So the, this technique was first reported in the year 1978 by two very important British physiologists who were the two British physiologists who reported this technique for the first time. The name is Patrick Stepto and Robert Edward. And the success of uh, this technique was Louis Brown. Louis Brown, the first test tube baby and in India the first test tube baby was delivered in 
1986 by Indira Hinduja by Indira Hinduja I repeat what is IVF for ET it is a very important technique that comes to the rescue of the infertile couples and this is commonly called as what test tube baby program because the fertilization takes place in a glass or in vitro and uh, as I said this uh, technique was first reported by in 1978 by two very important British physiologists by name Patrick Steptoe and Robert Edwards and the success of this technique was the first test tube baby born called Louis Brown uh, and the in India the first test tube baby that was delivered uh, was in 1986 by Indira Hinduja. So what are the techniques that are involved in this IVF ET? Now let us study what are the important uh, techniques that are uh, implemented here. Here you can see here oocyte retrieval, you can see the matured oocytes are retrieved through a method called laparoscopy, I will explain one by one and then introduction of the sperm into the culture medium where the eggs are mature uh, oocytes are there and the process of fertilization is allowed and embryo transfer and after the process of fertilization the fertilized eggs are again uh, grown in a culture medium and allowed to undergo development up to a blastocyst stage then when the embryo is around uh, up to an blastocyst stage then it is uh, introduced into the uh, womb or the uterus uh, through cervix right and, and then the pregnancy is allowed to carry on. So these are the uh, very important sequential, sequential steps that are involved in this very important program called test tube baby program. So first one as I said induced ovulation then aspiration of mature oocytes aspiration of mature oocytes 3 culturing of oocytes culturing of oocytes fourth very important step is introduction of sperm introduction of sperm fifth embryo culture embryo culture then sixth is embryo transfer this is a very very important technique which we should know not only from examination point of view the knowledge what you are going to get uh, by knowing this technique is definitely very very important so how do we uh, how do they go for this program called ivf et or test tube baby program what are the sequential steps what are the steps as i said you can here you can see the steps right so what is the first step induced ovulation second step is what aspiration of mature oocytes next is what culturing of oocytes then fourth introduction of the sperm then fifth is embryo culture and the last part one is embryo transfer now let us study the first one induced ovulation and this ovulation is achieved by inducing hormones like gonadotrophins uh, and the gonadotrophins are induced so that a hyper uh, so that it can hyper stimulate the ovary to produce more than two to three eggs uh, that is what we call it as induced ovulation normally only one ovum is produced during one process of ovulation but due to this induced ovulation where a hormone called gonadotrophins like fsh and lh uh, are introduced into the ovary which will hyper stimulate the ovary to produce more ova that is the first step then now more ova are produced so what is this aspiration of mature oocytes which is done through laparoscopy so that is a laparoscope is inserted uh, through a small cut in the abdomen and the eggs are uh, sucked by a syringe from the ovary i repeat what is aspiration removal of the eggs how is it done it is done through laparoscopy that is an instrument called laparoscope is inserted through a small cut in the abdomen and the eggs are sucked out through a syringe from the ovary. So that is how the mature oocytes are extracted or are taken or aspired. Next, the same eggs, the matured oocytes are then cultured in a sterile medium and that medium is almost similar to the fluids that are found in the fallopian tube. So all the conditions should be favorable 
for the process of fertilization, it should be more or less like natural conditions in the fallopian tube. So, what is it? Next, the uh, aspard oocytes are then cultured in a in a medium or a sterile medium where it is almost like similar to the fluids of the fallopian tube. Next, the sperms from the partner are extracted and, and are introduced into the culture medium and the eggs and the sperms are allowed to fertilize and it takes around 12 hours to 24 hours for the process of fertilization to take place. So, after culturing the oocytes next very important step is what introduction of sperms. So, sperms from the partner are uh, extracted are taken and they are introduced into the culture medium containing the mature oocytes and the process of fertilization is allowed. So, the eggs will be fertilized with the sperm and then uh, it takes around how many hours 12 hours to 24 hours. Next what happens next very important step is embryo culture. What is embryo culture? Here as I said the fertilized eggs are then introduced into a culture medium for development. So, it has to develop up to what stage? Hope you have studied in a chapter called human reproduction. So, it is allowed to develop up to a stage called blastocyst. Hope you remember in my chapter called human reproduction, what did we learn? The, uh, the zygote undergoes a mitotic cell division to form what? Cleavage, cleavage into morula, morula into blastocyst. So, then the blastocyst is attached to the endometrium wall. So, I hope you remember in that chapter called human reproduction. So, next is what? So, now the embryo is developed up to a what stage? Blastocyst stage. Now, that blastocyst, the embryo which is in the blastocyst stage is allowed or introduced uh, through the cervix into the uh, uterus or the womb for further developmentation. For the further development, it is more or less called as what? Implantation. There on the process of development continues what we call it as pregnancy. So, there on as you said uh, even they can go for a test for pregnancy then they will they can make sure that the blastocyst is attached to the endometrium wall. So, that confirms that the female is pregnant that means to say the blastocyst is attached to the endometrium wall along with the formation of what a trophoblast layer and an inner cell mass. So, these are all the very important techniques for IVF ET or test tube baby program. Hope you have understood uh, this uh, test tube baby technique. Now, let us as I said in this method ova from the wife or from the female donor and sperm from the husband or from the male donor are collected and are induced to form what zygote and the simulated conditions in the laboratory as I said up to what stage they are allowed to develop up to 8 blastomia stage then it is transferred into the fallopian tube. So, these are all the uh, steps that are uh, adopted for this very important technique which is commonly called as test tube baby. It is not like the baby is born in a test tube because the process of fertilization is allowed to take place in a glass uh, uh, plate or a glass dish hence the name test tube baby. Moving on to the next very important concept uh, next important technique called zygote intra fallopian transfer. You can see this uh, beautiful uh, picture uh, which will give you a clear uh, 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 technique like what is the clear process that is involved in this technique. How do we expand this GIF? GIF is called zygote intra fallopian transfer. This is a very very you can say the success rate is very very high in this technique why than compared to IVF and ET. Why do we call that the success rate is very high in this technique? Because in this technique the zygote is allowed to develop up to 8 cell stage and then it is transferred into the fallopian tube of the female directly. So, the chances of development is quite possible here. So, the zygote, so there the fusion has to happen and then the zygote is, uh, uh, then the implantation has to take place. But here in this technique the zygote is allowed to develop up to 8 cell stage and then it is transferred into the fallopian tube of the female. So, here you can see eggs are aspired from the ovary as I said. Uh, here you can see the fertilized embryos or zygotes are transferred into the fallopian tube where the further uh, from there it goes on and it develops and here the zygote will undergo what series of mitotic cell division like cleavage then morula blastula and it is developed up to what stage blastocyst stage then it is implanted here right. So, this is also a very very important uh, ART or a technique that is going to assist what conception 
to overcome what to overcome infertility moving on to the next very important uh, technique called intrauterine transfer so what is this technique all about in this technique the zygote is allowed to develop so the zygote is allowed to develop up to what eight cell stage and then it is transferred into the uterus there it is transferred into the fallopian tube right but here it is transferred into the uterus of the female so that more or less the development from the uterus it goes it develops and it gets attached to the endometrium wall and the process of uh, pregnancy will start so this is also a very important uh, technique uh, which comes to the rescue of the infertile couples here you can see here so here by using a catheter what is in the zygote is our uh, is allowed to develop up to more than eight cell stage then it is introduced into the uterus here you can see here it is introduced into the uterus so these are also a very important uh, techniques that are uh, implemented zygote right next gamete intrafallopian transfer compared to ivf and et uh, you can say even this also has more success rate so what is gift or gamete intrafallopian transfer here both the gametes that is the ovum and the sperm are taken and are introduced into the fallopian tube maybe of the same uh, uh, female or maybe even to a surrogate female but when the female uh, are not able to produce ovum so in that case uh, the, uh, even this uh, technique is also applied that is uh, in this technique the ovum of another female is transferred to the fallopian tube of the surrogate female which fertilizes with the sperm resulting in the process of formation of zygote so what is gift in this technique what happens the ovum of another female is transferred into the fallopian tube of the surrogate female what do you mean by surrogate female the one who is ready to carry on the process of pregnancy in in the later part is called as a surrogate mother this is particularly when a female is not able to produce sufficient ova uh, then mature ova so in that case this technique is applied which fertilizes with the sperm resulting in the process of formation of a zygote here you can see here the technique sperms and eggs are placed in the fallopian tube here 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 you can see through a catheter the sperms and the eggs are directly introduced into the fallopian tube so chances of fertilization is quite possible so here you can see the sperms and the eggs and the chances of fertilization is and after the process of fertilization what is formed zygote is formed and this zygote will undergo what mitotic cell division to what form what cleavage cleavage into morula then morula into blastocyst then after this blastocyst it will come roll like this and get attached to the endometrium wall so that is what we call it as what this we call it as what implantation this we call it as what implantation so what is gift gamete intrafallopian transfer in this technique the ovum of another female is transferred to the fallopian tube of the surrogate female or of the same female if she is able to produce mature ova uh, maybe the sperm uh, may not be feasible in that case so which fertilizes with the sperm resulting in the formation of a zygote moving on to the next technique called icsi what how do we expand this icsi intra cytoplasmic sperm injection definitely i need to add a note on this this is a technique which is particularly applied to those men who produce less sperm count so this technique is used in men who have low sperm count low sperm count and particularly they have abnormal sperms what do you mean by abnormal sperms they not they may not be motile the motility rate may be very very less so that is the reason they fail to reach the ovum to carry on the process of fertilization so particularly this icsi uh, is a technique used in men who have low sperm count and abnormal or abnormal sperms so in this technique the sperm is allowed to fertilize uh, uh, fuse with one of the uh, e uh, fertilize with each egg so as i said this technique in this technique the sperm is directly injected into the ovum 
and as I said this IC, uh, ICSI today is a revolutionized uh, technique for the men who have uh, who can overcome uh, infertility and uh, who, who have low sperm count and abnormal sperms. As I said ICSI uh, today is a revolutionized technique for the men who are infertile who produce who have low sperm count and who have abnormal sperm. So, this is a very very uh, important technique which is particularly used in men not in women it is used in men. So, that ICSI is a very very important technique which comes to the rescue of the men who have a low sperm count and abnormal uh, sperms as I said sperms um, a good number of sperms should be produced as all the sperms will not be successful in fusing with the ovum only one may be successful in fusing with the uh, uh, ovum and that is a reason good number of uh, sperm should be produced. So, when the sperm count is very less then the chances of fertilization also will be very less right. So, this is a very very important technique. Hope you have understood what is ICI here you can see here in this picture the sperm through a micro pipette is injected directly into the ovum. So, the chances of fusion of the nuclei the male nuclei with the female nuclei is quite possible. So, the process of fertilization we can give a guarantee for the process of fertilization in this technique uh, particularly which is used in men called ICSI. So, directly the sperm is injected into the ovum here you can see the sperm is directly injected into the ovum and the fuses with the egg nuclei right. So, this is a very very important technique. Moving on to the next very important technique called artificial insemination. Hope you remember when I started with the chapter called human reproduction one of the very important event in human reproduction is what insemination. How do we define this word called insemination then? Insemination is nothing but the transfer of the semen into the vaginal tract of track of the female or the transfer of sperm into the vagina of the female is called insemination. As I said the transfer of gametes is very very important. So, what is this artificial insemination? What is this technique all about? Here you can see in this technique the semen what is semen? Seminal plasma with sperm is called as semen and this semen is collected either from the husband or maybe from a healthy donor artificially and it is introduced into the vagina or the uterus of the female. As I said when the cervical mucus is hostile to the partner's sperms then they can go for this uh, technique called artificial insemination where in this technique the semen is collected either from the husband or maybe from the healthy donor and it is artificially introduced into the vagina or the uterus of the female hence it is called intra it can also be called as IUI. What is IUI? Intrauterine insemination, intrauterine insemination. So, this is about artificial insemination. This is also a very important technique here you can see here the sperms that is the semen carrying the seminal plasma and the sperms are directly introduced into the uh, from the cervix from the vaginal tract into the uh, into the uterus. So, here you can see the sperms moving around these are the sperms. So, this process of introducing the semen carrying the sperms directly into the uterus of the female is called artificial insemination. This is also one very very important technique that comes to the rescue to overcome what to overcome infertility right definitely as I said science and technology has improved to such an extent that it is coming to the help of this infertile couples even the infertile couples uh, who wish to have a child can bear a child by adopting any one of these techniques. But as I said science and technology is for the benefit of human mankind but it should not be exploited the, the technique should not be used for exploiting human mankind it should be used for the better purpose not for exploitation right. Hope you have understood all the uh, concepts what I have explained in this uh, very important uh, session that is about the ARTs. What are ARTs? ARTs are the assisted reproductive technologies or the techniques that assist conception to overcome infertility. So, what were the important ARTs we have come across? We have come across IVF ET, then we have come across GIFT, we have come across GIFT, we have come across ICSI, IUI, 
uh, yes, all these are the important ARTs that is definitely going to help the coupleless, uh, that is the issueless uh, couples to bear the child, right? Now, coming on to the next, in the coming session, so with this, with uh, today's session, I have completed a very, very important chapter, uh, four of your syllabus called reproductive health. So, in the coming session, what am I going to start with? I am going to start with a very, very important chapter, chapter 5 of your syllabus that is unit 2, chapter 5. So far till reproductive health, it was unit 1 called reproduction. So, all the 4 chapters that included under unit 1 were based on the concepts of reproduction. So, moving on to the next very important chapter that is called chapter 5 of your unit 5 that is which deals with principles and that is all about genetics, right? So, principles of inheritance and variation. So, what am I going to deal in this chapter 5 in the coming session? I am going to uh, deal with a concept called genetics. So, what is genetics? What is inheritance? What is heredity? Then what do you mean by dominant factor? What do you mean by uh, dominant character? Then what do you mean by recessive factor, recessive character? And how hope all of you know John Gregor Mendel is called father of genetics. So, we will be studying about a brief history about John Gregor Mendel in the coming session. Hope you have understood all the concepts what I have explained in today's session. So, I will be meeting you all in the coming session. Till then, goodbye and thank you.